guys, this is Sherry. Welcome back to Sherry Makes Sense. In this series, I'm going to be talking to you about the pre-baby steps leading up to the baby steps and just take you through the process. Um, again, this is the Dave Ramsey Baby Steps. If you haven't already, please check out his book, The Total Money Makeover. I have not taken his class yet through Financial Peace University. It's something that I do want to do but these are things that I've done without taking the class so if you're not able to take the class as well um, maybe this can help you. So for the first um, part of this after the prepping work is to actually dive in and get a written budget taken care of. So the format can be whatever style that suits your needs and I would even try different styles like a couple of them just to really test the waters um, I did. I usually start out with actual pen and paper or pencil and paper and just to see, I don't know, I like to dump it all out kind of and just have it written down. Just the actual action of writing things down helps me think and process better. And then I also like to transfer that information onto spreadsheets, whether it's Excel or Google Docs. But there are so many other formats out there that you can use as well. I have used Mint that I used a long, long time ago. I never really enjoyed that um, that format because I felt like I felt like it wasn't as clear cut to me. It had the information there, but I just felt like I had to log in to too many different places, and it may have changed since the last time I used it. So I'm not sure. Some other ones are the one through Dave Ramsey, the Every Dollar app that's also available it's free I did download that as well and tested it out just a little bit I didn't do it too much um, again it's one of those things where I felt like the format for me just didn't work out I didn't like having to like when I entered the stuff in it didn't make sense in my in my brain and that's why I like to first write it out on pen and paper and then transfer it myself onto uh, Google Docs Another one that I've heard about is uh, You Need a Budget. This is something you do have to pay for. It's either $5, I think it's $5 a month or $50 for a year. And I have not looked into that format um, just because of the fact that I have to pay for it. I'd rather do something free, especially if I'm trying to be on a budget. But that is another option if that's something you'd like to see as well. So if you haven't already started a written budget, uh, or if you have a written budget already written out, what format do you prefer and what has worked for you and have you evolved over the years? So I know again for me um, in the past I started out with everything on pen and paper and then I've always transferred it onto uh, some kind of Excel sheet and my Excel sheets have changed over the years. I wish I had kept them so I could show you guys but I actually deleted it as soon as I started this program. I kind of wanted a fresh start. And I'm the type of the per type of person that I really just, when I do something, I dive in and I just want a fresh start. So I, I unfortunately deleted it and regretted it right after. Um, but I know that it has evolved over the years. In my previous budgets, I didn't have the concept of a zero-based budget in my mind. I didn't know anything about that. So I always thought of having a cushion um, just for emergencies and cases if something came up that I hadn't planned for. So in my um, previous budgets, I had a cushion of, I want to say $200 is where I wanted to keep it at, but I because I didn't assign every dollar to something, I had no control over that cushion and it was all over the place for me. So what worked best for you? You need to collect all your data. For me, I have um, all of my stuff is already through AutoPay. So we have all of our bills paid through AutoPay and all of our tra transactions before were mostly on our debit card or credit card. So I could just go and look on our bank statements. I opted out for paperless, paperless statements. So a lot of it was email notifications. Um, it, for you that might be the same and it might not. You might actually still have the paper format, which is fine. You just need to collect all of that data and have it in front of you. Um, take an afternoon or just whenever you work best. If you're a night owl, do it then. If you're an early bird, do it then. Just whatever is best for you. 
but you want to take that time to sit down with the data and work on your budget. A couple other things to keep in mind when you're collecting the data is you want to make sure that you're getting all of the bills from each company. You want to know what your owed amount is, when the minimum or if there's a minimum amount due as well as when is the due date. So you want to make sure that all your information is accurate that way when you start this process if for example you um, for like your electric bill, if you think it's due on the 25th and it's actually due on, let's say, the 15th of the month and you pay it late, then that just adds on to more fees that you are aware or that you are responsible for is to start writing out your budget. And this part can be really overwhelming. Now, I know I said earlier that your budget will evolve and it changes um, just depending on what suits your needs, but once you actually have a format that fits you, then you, you actually will also evolve that as well. Each month will generally look the same, but there will be some differences just because, you know, bills don't go out the same month, same time every month. Um, and what I mean by this is, yes, you're going to pay your monthly subscriptions for, you know, like Netflix, um, your water bill might come out every other month or every month. Everyone's different. I know for us, our sewer and um, yeah, our trash company is quarterly as well as our uh, one of the other ones. But just being aware of when those things come out and keeping track of it, that way you don't forget. So for me, having those email notifications sent to me helps a lot and it kind of reminds me. But on my spreadsheet also, I have a function where I can leave notes in each of the um, cell sheets or cell, I don't know what to call them, but the cells. And that way I can leave the notes there that's saying that this is due every other month or quarterly, whatever the case may be. The other thing is there is going to be categories as far as your written budget is concerned. And so for me, the way that it's broken down into is you always start with your income because you need an income to start taking money out of. And so that's number one is always what are you making? What is your monthly income? And if it changes paycheck to paycheck, that's totally fine. Um, I take a rough estimate and it could be like based on your hourly or if your salary just what you average make a month or per paycheck and then use that as a, a budget reference um, and then from there you also can um, you'll know what your expenses are that that's why you collect the data so you know what your um, fixed expenses are and your variable, variable expenses are and that's how I've broken it down. I know people also can categorize it by housing, car, uh, insurance, stuff like that. Just whatever works best for you. Um, the next thing after that for me is my actual debt. So I've listed out my debt uh, from highest, or no, I'm sorry, lowest to highest, just like the snowball method. And so I have that all on my the same spreadsheet. After the debt, is our sinking funds, which you can also include your savings. Um, I actually don't put my emergency fund on my spreadsheet just because I know as of right now it's going to stay at $1,000. I think I should put it on there just so that I know that it's there and it's something I should start building eventually once I'm done with our debt. Um, but the sinking fund is really important too so that you know what exactly you are putting towards each category in your sinking funds. I will have a, a separate video for sinking funds itself, so that's something you can look forward to later. And then the very last thing to include on your budget, or at least that I did, um, and again, I was following the Gazelle Intense, their budget tutorial, so you can check them out, but leisure. So anything that involves fun stuff, eating out, entertainment, um, his and her personal money, uh, and I've also included home a home fund. Okay guys, so that is it for this video on the written budget. Again, it's very basic. I know it's not a lot of details as far as our information is concerned, but just so that you know where to start and where to go with your information. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. I hope this was informative and um, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.